after that one. Well, he has a nice stroke. It's just a matter of, it, again, a lot of times it's not physical, Eric. You've been around enough to know that free throw shooting in your game itself is a lot of times in between your ears. It's the mental aspect of it. A little bit short. That last foul was called on Jeremy Robinson, the leading scorer for Chicago State. He's got two early fouls. He's gone to the bench. Quincy Ukagwi has now replaced him. He's number 34 in green. He's got the ball over to Ross now. Ruger is generally a, a pretty good three-point shooting team. They average seven three-pointers made. That's tops in their conference, the Great West. They've already made two in the game's first three minutes. It's a matter of quality of shots and what kind of three-pointers you get against this Ohio State defense. Shot clock winding down, and Pippen <laughs> knocks it in. His second three-pointer made. Quality what? <laughs> quality. <laughs> Just put me on the court and you give me a look at it, Pippen says, right? How about that? Chicago State, the two-point lead early in this one. Yeah, but you can't be mad. I mean, you, you can test a, you know, 25-foot three-point shot. If it goes in, it's better on the button, so a good shot. You don't think they're going to make those for 40 minutes? Um, There's another foul called on Chicago State. That's the third foul on a Cougar trying to defend against Amir Williams. Quincy Ukagwi called for the personal. Well, you have the size advantage. You have to... Continue to go to him. I thought Lindell could have swung the ball over. It would have been an easier entry pass into uh, Amir into the post, but uh, they got away with it with a foul. Wrath will start the offense. Fresh shot clock for the Buckeyes. They trail Chicago State by a pair. It's the fourth time Ohio State has played Chicago State. Buckeyes have blown up the Cougars every time they have played. They're right. Yeah, you were involved in two of them. There's a travel on Lenzel Smith Jr. And the turnover gives it back over to Chicago State. That was a long time. I, you know, I forgot all about that. That was sure a long time ago. I think I had 15 and 30. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you enjoyed looking at that box score. It was, it was filled out, too. It was 30, <laughs> some assists, a couple of rebounds, a few steals. Complete pack. I got lucky that day. Inside, you caught away blocked by Williams. That's why he's in the lineup. The eraser, last line of the defense. Long shot, Lenzel Smith Jr. for three. Well, prime example of your defense starting your offense. Great block by Amir, keeping the ball in play. Now you have an advantage in transition. Lenzel knocks down an open three. Buckeyes up by one. Just getting started here in Columbus. Final non-conference game of the season for Ohio State. They've got Nebraska January 2nd as their next game. Shots missed by Rosenberg. We've got a whistle and a timeout on the floor. Chance for everyone to catch their breath. Lenzel Smith Jr. off to a nice offensive start. He's got half of the Buckeyes, 10 points. Well, Visitors hitting the outside shot. Well, they are. The Chicago State uh, Cougar team shoots customarily 35% from the three-point line, but dribble, dribble penetration outside to Matt Ross. And then when you're on the road against a team like Ohio State, there's no pressure on you. Look at this shot. 25 feet out. I'll take it. I'm on that. What do you have to lose? I mean, think about it. You're playing this game for conference time to get ready to play. So there's no pressure on you. You come out, you play loose, you let it fly, and you see what happens. Substitution for Chicago State. Jameer dismukes into the game for the first time. He's number two in green. And Smith is fouled from behind. They're going to call it on Clark Rosenberg. Yeah, a little uh, switch into a zone defense out of the timeout. Force Ohio State to play on the perimeter. If you're Ohio State, look at the gaps. Free throw line in the middle. Attack from those angles. You'll get some good shots. That's already five team fouls on Chicago State. Buckeyes haven't committed one. Good passing for Ohio State. Open look for Kraft. Misses the three ball. Chicago State down by one. This is Dismukes crossing the timeline. Yeah, you can't be mad at that shot by Aaron Kraft. They got the shot they wanted. He just had to feel comfortable to knock it down. Oh, man. That glass. You, <laughs> you called it. You think Chicago State's enjoying playing it so far? Well, what do you have to lose? You just play. You know, they're loose, okay? You're playing against a nationally ranked team, a game you're not supposed to win. Where, where's the pressure at for you? You've been there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sam Thompson. Misses inside, one and done. Rebounded by Dismukes out to Rosenberg. Rosenberg stops. And Ross can't corral the rebound. It'll be all Buckeye basketball. 
Well, you know, the, Chris Gent been working with Aaron Kraft a little bit on the stroke. Right here, you see a little hesitation and a little hitch in his jump shot. As soon as he receives his right here and he goes up, see that elbow that's sticking out right there? What you want to do is bring that inside almost like an L shape. So right now, Chris Jen is working on Aaron Kraft to one, remove that hitch, but get him back into proper shooting rhythm and perspective and form that now is just an easier stroke. Thomas misses. Another one and done. Yukogwi with the rebound. You mentioned Chris Jen, assistant coach with the Buckeyes. One of his former pupils in terms of shooting, LeBron James. When Chris Jen was an assistant in Cleveland, he was the shooting guru that LeBron and a number of those Cavs would work with. Where's practice? Here works with. Another block from Williams, but they're going to call it for a push before the block. Yeah, we, we, we mentioned Chris Jen, and he still works with LeBron, and you see the improvement in LeBron's jump shot, his rhythm, his form, the arch on his ball, the same things he's worked with Aaron Kraft, but also keep your eye on Sam Thompson. Last year, he had a flared elbow when he shot. Now that elbow is more tucked in. It's more of a rhythmic shot, all due to Chris Jen and his work ethic. Do you think Chris wants us telling people here in Ohio that he still is friendly with they LeBron James? They don't care. That's his boy. They don't care. I know. He doesn't care. Oh, okay. Chris doesn't. That's his boy, you know? He didn't do anything to Chris, you know? <laughs> Chicago State on top of Ohio State by one. This is Quincy Yukagui, senior from Matson, Illinois, south suburb of Chicago. He splits the two free throws. LaQuinton Ross and Shannon Scott coming in during that last whistle for Ohio State. This is Ross. And the pass almost stolen away. Evan Ravenel now in the game as well. And this one is thrown away. Stolen by Quentin Pippen. And, and Coach Mata talked to Shannon about one jumping in the air and two throwing a cross-court pass. Very dangerous. You see it lead, leads to a steal. A contested shot disputes a Kraft's hand right in his face. That Mata does not like playing that first game after the Christmas break. Always thinks it's difficult to get your team back in a rhythm. And right now, Ohio State not off to a great start. Super Wednesday returns with a great doubleheader of action. First, the Buckeyes take it on Nebraska. And Purdue takes on the Illini. It all starts at 6 p.m. with the tip-off show. That is presented by the Buffalo Wild Wings. Super Wednesday. Coming your way January 2nd. Well, Eric, I can understand why that would be, you know, a little... Uh, had a little trepidation because they had a break. You see a steal here before the Winthrop game, and they came back and didn't play well. He's going to be reaching foul on Aaron Kraft going for the steal at half court. Number four, Aaron Kraft, his first team second. And Ohio State had seven days to think about their last performance when they didn't shoot well at all here at Value City Arena against Kansas in that losing effort. Well, here's the thing there. The shots that they were able to get off of dribble drive penetration inside the post, you see a foul on Shannon. Scott, they were open shots. So you can't complain at the quality of shots. The Buckeyes just weren't able to knock them down. Now, is that going to be an ongoing issue? We don't know. They're shooting pretty good, you know, from the three-point line in non-conference. But as defenses get tougher, Eric, it's going to be very important that they hone in and have, you know, consistent shooting from the perimeter, being that they don't have a low post threat as of yet. There's some uh, perspiration on the floor where Shannon Scott dove for the loose basketball. Marcus starts into the game for Chicago State, number 54 in green. If you haven't checked it out. See every basketball game playing on Big Ten Network. Do your own scouting. It is a, uh, a tool that the conference uses to their advantage from a recruiting perspective. You can tell families, no matter where you're at, that your son, your daughter is going to be on TV, well, have a chance to view them. Yeah. Smart for whatever it is. I mean, that's Jim Delaney. You know, he, he knows what he's doing. <laughs> you know, there's no doubt about that. Six years into the network, proving to be a success. Thompson stymied by Rosenberg. Chicago State looking to run. Their offense has been non-existent here in the second half. And we're going to have a blocking foul on Thompson. We talk so much about Thompson trying to improve his offense. Mm -hmm. 
Last year, he was on the floor for defensive reasons with Sam Thompson. Is the defense still as good as it was a year ago? It is, and he has a better understanding coming out of high school of how to play college defense. Again, not found. He got caught in that situation, but he's so athletic. He's long. He can really disrupt a lot of perimeter players with his defensive efforts, a la what Lindsay Smith did when he came in. I think Sam Thompson's parents are going to get upset if we just see, keep saying he's athletic. He's also really darn smart, too. He's a finance major. Told me his mom is a psychologist. His dad is a lawyer. Wow. Never won an argument there, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be back to Columbus in a moment. <laughs> <laughs> They'll see you before you see them. Cops are cracking down on drinking and driving. Drive sober or get pulled over. Get all access video content. Download our great mobile apps and participate in one-of-a-kind online auctions. OhioStateBuckeyes.com, part of the Big Ten Digital Network. Day, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Conference play tips off for the Buckeyes and Cornhuskers when they square off in Columbus. How about that? Then, Mackey will be rocking as the surprising Illini hit the road to take on the Boilermakers. Big Ten Super Wednesday, presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Coverage begins at 6 Eastern with the tip-off show only on BTN. left to play in this one Ohio State now on top of Chicago State by 21 Let's take a look at today's Verizon key connection well it comes from Deshaun Thomas he's become a better pass and the reason why is because he's become a willing pass and when you do that now you're able to involve your teammates you evolve your game and uh, it makes you a tougher guard and you can do a combination of a not just scoring He's also done a bit of scoring. He's got 15 points. He now has 1,132 points in his Ohio State career. Just this afternoon, Jim Jackson, he has passed Curtis Wilson, a point guard out of Akron St. Vincent, St. Mary, played the early 80s at Ohio State. He's passed Brad Sellers, seven foot center, of course, had a nice NBA career. Right. And uh, he's passed Richard Snicker. Good guy. Next on the list is Jamal Brown. Early 2000s guard. No. And then Frank Howard. Jamal Brown played with you? That's right. With Mark Baker? That's the, right. Oh my goodness. He was our defensive out of Dallas or Houston. Out of uh, Fort Worth. Come on. Okay. Okay. Come on. Shot clock violation. That's going to be another Ohio State chance. And Eric Kraft almost carried the basketball. Thomas, quick trigger from behind the arc. Offensive rebound, Amir Williams, and he's grabbed. All right, we're talking about guys on the all-time scoring list for Ohio State. How about some trivia for you? Which player is tied for third all-time in scoring at Ohio State with Jerry Lucas? I'll give you a little bit of a hint. The top scorer is Dennis Hobson. So just cross him off the list. Well, I can't participate in this because I know the answer. That's for our fans at home. I'm not sure. They're asking me. You know what? 
I'll bet Dimes the Donuts you're going to get it wrong. Well, it's not me. I can tell you that now. <laughs> I, I, I wasn't here long enough. You were here. Uh, you were seven. I, I chose to in move three into another profession. Okay, let's go straight to it. I, I need to know your answer. I'm not giving you Who is tied I'm for not, third with Jerry Lucas all-time score? I'm not giving you two. I don't know. <laughs> it's not for me. Uh, we'll get back to it. We'll have that's for our fans to decide. That's you know. Quentin Pippen at the free throw line. You missed it before. Quentin Pippen is related to another Pippen that you may know. Scotty Pippen is his uncle. All right, here's the answer. Oh wait, wait. Oh, I was gonna say it because I was gonna say it's a guy from Toledo, but that's okay. William Buford. Right? Now you notice something just last year. Didn't notice something. Dennis Hobson from Toledo. Toledo Bowser. The third leading scorer, Buford, Toledo Libby. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, wait. Who's number two? Well, that's her, I think it is. Right? He's, okay. He's Columbus, from Columbus. Right? But how about this? Almost career leader in assists here at Ohio State. How about Maybe that? Calvin Ramsey. A steal by Duhon, a lamp, and he's fouled by Shannon Scott. Chance for the three point play. Sloppy turnover that time by the Buckeyes. You get a chance to take advantage of it if you're Chicago State. So you're saying the best scores for the most part at Ohio State are Toledo guys? <laughs> I didn't say it, but I'm just saying. I gave you an assist there with assist Calvin Ramsey. Went to my high school. Well, I went to his high school. Portland Trail Blazer, New Jersey Net. He was nice. He was from Toledo. Did I say that? Number 20, Kellogg is 28th all time. He was a re I mean, he did. Hart did a little bit of everything. I mean, look at, the, look at the team he played with, too. I think he was there three years. I think it was just two. Three, maybe. I think it was three. Special K out of Cleveland. Yeah, but, you know, he had Herbie. He had a bunch of guys. Carter Scott. Scott. I mean, he had Jim a... Jim Smith. Jim Smith. He had a complete team. I tell you, you know, when I was here, too, I didn't have to score a lot. Even though I probably one or two more. <laughs> and Randy would take me out the and game. And you did. But, no, I didn't have... It wasn't relying upon me to have to score 25 to 30 points for us to be successful. But, you know, there were times in Chicago State that the 30 number rang up. When you could rip the ball away from Terry. Look at this. November 30th, 1991. It was against the Chicago State team. Oh, how ironic. You had how 30 ironic. points. Wow. Buckeye scored one by 72. That was over at St. John Arena. Ball out of bounds. It'll go to Chicago State. You know, Coach Harris used to take me out the game. I used to get so mad. <laughs> coach, leave me in the game. He said, I got to keep you hungry. Got to keep you hungry. I, I said, coach, you don't have to worry about that. Hey, you're talking about St. John Arena. Anything uh, on this floor today remind you of the courts that you used to play on? Better believe it, right in the center. The state of Ohio. That's new. You like that look? Uh, of course. I think it's fantastic. Go right in the dime, baby. Right there in the middle. For all you don't know, that means Ohio 10, like Big 10 back in the day. That's just a little little something we say around the way. The only state that's round on the outside and high in the middle. <laughs> Contested shot is missed by Jameer Dismukes. Ohio State back with the basketball. Up by 17. It's been a sloppy last minute and a half. Trying to settle things down. Lenzel Smith Jr. misses the floater. Seems like this year Lenzel is really attacking the basket, not settling for jumpers like he has in years past. Well, that's good because you want to put pressure on the defense. You don't want to bail them out, and bailing a, a person out is just settling for contested long jump shots. Pippen misses the three. Ravenel the rebound. Thomas is going to fire that one up, no doubt about it. A little bit off. And it's going to be Chicago State basketball. You know, what I'm looking to see also from this Ohio State team is that growth defensively. And what I mean is that you have athletic wing with Lindsay, with Sam, with a Quentin Rose. Okay? The intensity that you have to bring each and every night, the passion. We didn't see that in the first half. We don't really see it in the second half, kind of going through the motion. But this team can be so effective defensively, but that takes effort. That takes energy. And you have to bring that each and every game because that sometimes, Eric, can win you a game or two when you're not shooting the ball extremely well. Well, Quentin Ross getting his first second half playing time. This is Ross guarding Pippen. Back lock down to eight. Duhon going one-on-one, -on -one, hand in the face. 
And the shot is missed. Going for the rebound. Foul called on Quincy Yukagwi. Coming up tonight, it's the finale presented by Reese's. Our guys in the studio breaking down a full day of basketball. Highlights and analysis from people that know the Big Ten. That's tonight at 9 Eastern on BTN. The foul on Yukagwi, his fourth. He is in danger of falling out. Ross, extra pass over to Ravenel, who's fouled from behind. If that's on Yukagwi, he's fouled out. When's the last time you saw a guy foul out with 13 minutes left in a game? Yeah, watch the passing. One dribble, up, up, touch pass. See, that, that allows now a team can't get back. You know, if you pound the ball, that allows a team to get back defensively and take away the, the coaches always talk about the pass is faster than the dribble. Chicago State catching a break. That foul is called on Jameer Dismukes. So Yukagui stays in the game. Ravenel, an effective free thrower. Over 70% makes the first. Ravenel beginning his college career in the ACC, playing at Boston College. Or coming over to Ohio State. This is second season with the Scarlet and Gray. And I think Evan can be that enforcer that's going to be needed in conference play. You know, you kind of take that on. You know, invite that, live that, be that kind of person that, you know, teams know about. That, that's the enforcer inside. Aaron Kraft forces a bad shot, disputes, barely grazes iron. Smith whacked in the face. And this time, Yukagui is going to foul out. So Quincy Yukagui picks up his fifth foul. 12-34 remaining in this one, and he will be dismissed. Coming up next, we wrap up our triple header with the Wolverines against Central Michigan. Coverage continues next, only on the Big Ten Network. Michigan ranks second in the entire country. There goes Yukagui. He's replaced by Jeremy Robinson. Yeah, how about that Michigan team? 